I'm Cinnamon Cooney, I'm the Art Sherpa, and in today's quick quest, I'm going to talk about how to mix three very easy skin tones so that when you're painting along with me tutorials, you can paint your figures to reflect a sense of beauty that is closer to your heart and your reality. These are going to be easy, they're going to be direct, and I'm going to unlock a lot of stuff for you that you might not have heard before. So get your paint, get your brushes, get a palette knife, and come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to do fast skin tones. So let's start with the first skin tone that I'm going to show you today, which is a fair skin tone. You've seen me do this a little bit before in my channel, but I'm going to give you a couple more tips to make you even more successful in your arting. Let's go to the palette and check this out. So I have titanium white, yellow ochre, and quinacridone magenta. So basically what you're looking at is white, kind of a yellow, and a red. One of the things that you can do to help you get a good skin tone when you're painting is to mix a master recipe, which just means that you're going to create the basis of your skin tone in a slightly larger quantity so that you can highlight or add shadows very easily without changing skin tones during the mix. Now you'll notice I took about one of the quinacridones, one little pearl of quinacridone, over to at least two to three little pearls. And I'll have to add a little more yellow ochre because I got a little more quinacridone on my knife. But I'm just trying to make kind of a warm peach right here is what I'm looking for. Keep in mind that these are three very basic recipes and artists might collect a hundred skin tone recipes as they're painting. Now the next skin tone I can add here is I need to have a bit of a shadow. And a good way to make a shadow is with burnt umber and a little bit of ultramarine blue. You don't need a lot of it at all. And I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine blue and mix that with some of my burnt umber. And now I have this ready to create shadows. And then the next thing that you can like on an easy skin tone recipe is a highlight. And I have some nickel yellow, Naples yellow here. Any really light yellow is what you're looking for. If all you have is cad yellow light or cad yellow, it'll work. And I'm going to take just a smidge. Can you see that smidge? And I'm going to add that to my white because I don't want to just put necessarily straight white in my skin tone recipe. So now I have these three values. I can pull out my brush and I'm going to get, let's pick a fun one that I'm excited about today. I will take this number six bright. I'm using a synthetic bristle brush. It's not going to hold a lot of water. It's not going to get too much water going. And I'm going to start the basis of my skin tone. So I'm going to take a little of this master recipe and add my highlight to it to lighten my skin tone. And I'll do that until I get a color that I feel I like. And you can see that we're definitely in that skin tone range. So I'm going to just paint this in. I have pre-sketched in these figures for you so you can see me doing the three values and skin tones. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this all in. Now again, keep in mind that artists can maintain hundreds of skin tone recipes that they tend to paint. And this does not represent in any way the diversity that we as human beings have, but this gives you a starting place so that you can talk more accurately in your art about the things that are important to you. Right? So I'm going to paint her whole body with this basis right here just to give this the first layer. And you can see this is quite light. I relate to this as a, as a very fair person who 
who sunburns from the moon, you know, what this is. I don't necessarily like to work from the tube of paint, like to buy a skin tone tube of paint, because I feel like people don't have even skin tones. They are not like a plastic Barbie doll. You know, different parts of our bodies are exposed to more weather and more sunlight. We have areas that have more blood flow than others. And that really impacts, you know, our skin. So it's just ridiculous to think that we're just completely one anything, right? Once I have this value here, what I can do is I can get a little of my low light. Look at that. This is my shadow. And I can come and add under the jaw or anywhere I need to have a shadow. This easy, easy shadow. That way I'm not struggling. I'm not just adding black to my skin tone. Because if I just added the color black to my skin tone, it would gray it out. And in fact, I don't actually think I've ever even really added black that often to a skin tone mixture. I'm just creating a little shadow here. Just showing you how working from this fair recipe, now I'm gonna need some glazing liquid. This is acrylic glazing liquid gloss and it helps slow down the drying time on my paint. It can also help me blend and glaze. So it's a really good tool to have in the studio. You can just use water. It's all fine. But you'll notice like right here where I've got this, that way I can kind of create a nice more subtle blend around my figure. And then if I wanted to have a little bit of a rosier color, it's really easy for me to get my Whatever your skin tone mixture is, it's really easy then to go to your red to pick up a little blushing. So you can super easily create a blush. This is going to work, you know, on any, any of the girls that we teach on the channel. So you can take them to that next level. Glaze that out a little bit. I'm just showing you how you can do this. This also works incredibly well. You know, just anywhere you're painting a figure and you're just really new. And you're like, I just don't really know about the skin tone thing, right? See how she's starting to have a little bit of a blush to her. And another thing that I can do is I can also use, I'm going to get even a little more of the yellow, the yellow and the white, to easily show sunlight or highlights. It just makes short and easy work to figure painting and gives me a basis to start thinking about these things, even though I might be new in a, in a better way. So let's do our next girl and I'll show you a medium skin tone. All right, I'm ready to mix my next skin tone value. I think you're gonna really like it. The colors are gonna change up a little bit, but many of the principles that I just showed you will still apply here. Let's go to the color palette and see what we're gonna do next. Now you can see this has changed up a little bit. I have raw sienna, yellow ochre, cad orange, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and again, a little Naples yellow, titanium white, and my glazing liquid so that I get nice flow. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix out my base recipe. So the biggest amount of paint that I'm gonna pull out is of course my raw, uh, raw sienna, and then I'm gonna take my yellow ochre and I'm gonna make a nice mix there. And you're gonna see that I'm getting a nice golden color. But I'm missing my red, right? We have blood, we have circulation, so I need something to warm that up a little bit. I'm gonna take actually, surprisingly enough, my cat orange over here. Isn't that interesting? That might not be something that you were thinking of. You might have gone for red. And again, in some formulations, depending on if somebody has a blue undertone to their skin, people can have purple or green. 
hundreds of skin tone recipes is in no way exaggerating. This is just three simple ones you could do to get started. So there's our base master recipe. Let's mix that highlight again, right? A little of our soft light Naples yellow into our white. I don't really in general like putting just straight titanium white in to lighten a skin. It just, uh, it can really make it look grayed out and washed out. So adding that little bit of yellow to warm this up, I think is super helpful. Let's offload that off the palette really well. And then of course, this base graying recipe. Look, some recipes will call for a purple, some will call for just a blue, right? This is just one that you know you can do throughout three different values. And I'm just kind of almost doing a one-to-one -one on the burnt umber to the ultramarine. So now I have enough paint to paint my figure. It's not gonna be drying out and changing on me so that I can't get the mix again. I'm gonna take a little of my little highlight out but not too much because I still want a pretty rich skin tone. Let's come in here and you can see this is just a warmer, richer skin tone. Just coming in here and you can see that this is darker than this. These are both from the same mix. So all I'm saying to you here, right, is if you don't add any of the highlight to the master recipe, then you can have a fairly rich skin tone, but if you add white to the master recipe, it will lighten a lot. So in each skin tone that I'm showing you, believe it or not, there's a lot of value changes that you can get for each one. I'm just kind of coming around her ear here. So if I were to get back into this, where we have this highlight and put the highlight here. Just don't want to gray this out. Just bring this around. See the, see the different possibilities that each of these recipes, even as simple as they are, give you. You know, and start to see your subjects and really start looking at people. One, observe how uneven their skin is and that that's beautiful. I think that's something that um, because of the cosmetic industry, having such an investment in evening out our skin tone is that we really, really start to think that an even skin tone is what we're looking for when in actuality if you start being very observational, that it's an uneven skin tone that's quite beautiful. It's the, it's the freckles or it's the kind of readiness around a nose where it gets real red. These things are actually what makes the beauty, weirdly. It's our imperfections and it's something that you'll see more and more as you paint. Um, you know, and you'll find people can have a lot of opinions on the subject and really, really want to impose those opinions on you. And what I'm going to say is you need to paint what your inner reflection of beauty is, not the world's. And you need to respond to what your inner reflection of beauty is, not the world's. So I'm putting this in, it's very nice against this dress. Notice how this is still pretty warm and not washed out. I think this is something that troubles a lot of new artists and even some experienced artists is getting these base recipes in. You know, obviously in portraiture, you spend a lot more time working at, working at that and painting that in. Let's get our shadow in. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to bring a little of my grain color over to my skin tone here. See that right there? Doesn't take a lot. 
I'm going to come and add this shadow under my jawline. Let's go around our ear. Need my glazing liquid. Really helps me blend. You know, water does this too, but I really like it. The other reason why it's nice to mix up your skin tones in larger batches is so that you can do very, when you do get ready to do portraiture, having these mixed up so you can just work on values and not be worrying about micro mixes is incredibly helpful. Micro mixes is that kind of little mixing of a bit of paint, mixing of a bit of paint, mixing of a bit of paint. Add a shadow right here. And you just got to be careful, you know. You know, if you want to add a little sunny highlight, that's pretty easy to do. You can even, at this point, I think you can even sometimes come in with just the yellow ochre in the Naples. Create a little sunlight on the shoulder. So a lot of people might go for white, but I think here sometimes it's better to avoid that and lighten the value perhaps in another way. We'll just do a little bit right here. Cheek. Interesting. Maybe I'll get a little of my kind of orange, just a touch. I want to get a glaze. Come right here. Add some color. Not fun. And maybe not what you were thinking or expected. But what you're trying to do is paint, you know, isn't that nice how the yellow just does that? Okay. All right, so we have a nice little middle range here. I'm going to make sure, one of the things that can happen is, you know, you want to make sure that your paint is rich and not streaky. So like it got a little bit there and I want to add a little more of the base recipe. Right here. And come back with like just the base recipe. Maybe add that. You see how it suddenly starts giving you possibilities in your painting, and also how having the pre mixture allows you to work out values even on a simple figure that make your painting look better. Now, see, I'm getting into painting, is what I'm doing. So we got to move on to the next skin color, but hopefully this is giving you some thoughts, some perspectives on some different ways that you can paint. Let's do our final skin tone. All right, let's do our last and darkest skin tone. And there's a lot that I have to say here. So if this is where you're focusing, come along. This is going to be a revelation for you. I got some stuff you might not have ever heard before. Let's go. So over here, you're going to see burnt umber, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and I've included a cool red. This is a lizarin crimson hue. I definitely want to keep using my glazing medium, and I have Naples yellow. You'll notice that I'm refraining from putting out any white, and I have a very good reason for that. When you're adding white to a very rich and dark skin tone, it takes the skin so gray is to make the skin appear lifeless and ashy, and therefore it will never, never read true. And I think this is the foundation why sometimes artists have a harder time with darker skin tones, because all the basic formulations that you see kind of pivot around the idea that you're lightening with a white. But here we're not going to. Now, I'm going to pull out a, at least one of my burnt umber, and I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna, and I'm going to start making this rich base value. This is going to be a warmer skin tone. This isn't going to be cool. 
So if you were looking to make a cooler dark skin tone, it won't do as well there. But I think you're gonna be surprised at how nice this actually is. Right, so we're getting that. Now I've got to I've got to warm this up a little bit. Guess what I'm gonna take? I'm gonna take CAD Orange. Beautiful, isn't it? All right, so we have a great base. I don't believe that this can just be achieved with a tube of paint. You know, I think getting in here and mixing that with a palette knife, that's a big deal. And makes for a much better basic skin tone. Now this time, because I have my burnt umber over here, I'm gonna go with my alizarin crimson and my ultramarine blue. And this is where my shadow is going to come from. See that? Gorgeous, right? Leaving me some alizarin crimson if I need to create a blush somewhere in the skin. This is how I'm gonna highlight. I am not gonna be using white to highlight. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint in my base skin tone. If you've been trying to paint darker skin tones and really been struggling, this whole part here will be almost a revelation as you go through it. I know it was for me. And I think you're gonna find it very, very freeing and you're gonna start getting some good results if you have not before. And again, just one skin tone recipe. There are many, many skin tone recipes that artists have. And if you were to say, think about like uh, portrait artists, really famous, world famous portrait artists, well, those recipes are a big deal. And oftentimes, they keep them very secret. One of my very favorite portraits on earth was done with three colors. And it looks like it was painted with 30. I um, am always stunned when I see it and I always find it humbling when I see that. I am just pulling this out here. Now, uh, one of the things that you'll run into as a painter when you're painting darker, deeper, warmer skin tones is browns can have a tendency to be a titch streaky, right? And transparent. This is something that you're challenged by. There are a couple tricks to this. Um, you can do an underpainting base first, right? Like a, a, a acrylic colored ground can help with that or just knowing that in this case, you are really, really going to need to get away with layers. With my fair skin, I don't need as many layers, but here I will. Darker my skin tone is. Notice that I am refraining from using any white or any black. Just bringing the arm through here because I think I sketched it through here touch that up later and perfect that for the next, but we're gonna just generally say, arm goes through there. We don't wanna, just want you to see how the paint is laying down for me. You know, understand that yes, the browns can be, get my glazing medium out to improve my flow. The issue, other issue with glazing medium here is again, it causes the paint to be even more transparent so yes, it improves my flow, but I'm gonna need a couple coats. All right. There we go, some nice work happening here. We're just not afraid to put our paint down. That's what That's what's gonna be our our major, major goal. Now I need a low light. So I'm gonna take my grain color. Look at this, look at what this does. Totally different than what you might have expected. I'm gonna put this shadow down. Just a little much paint. 
working on there. Wipe my brush off. Whatever your brush has too much paint, just wipe it off. See how my shadow? Sometimes when we're new to painting, the temptation is to use black to create the shadow. You can do that. That is not always the right choice. Here, make sure your paint is good and dry because sometimes when you're using glazing medium it can it can actually fight you on the drying time and make your job just significantly harder than you might have wanted it to be. So I'm just trying to run a nice shadow here. Alright, put a little shadow under. under the arm shadow under the dress there's just a lot you can do and when you have the right kind of basis it gets easier to do I'm going to show you a couple things about highlighting I'm going to rinse this out so my first highlight that I can do is just with my yellow ochre and this basic recipe. I want to create a highlight. That's how I'm going to do it, right there. And this is going to make a big difference in even your simple paintings, whatever simple paintings that you have, to not just Put the white in the paint or the black in the paint, but to use yellows like yellow ochre to create the feeling of light on skin. See how different that is? Got a little too much of my brush there. I got a little too excited. It happens. You know, you're just creating a lighter value. And because the master recipe has ochre in it, you know, let's give a highlight to the ear. You can come right up here on top of the head. See? You can see how this then just isn't graying out the skin in any way. If you really, really had to, you've got your Naples yellow, right? Just a little bit of Naples yellow to say there's a very, very, what if there's like a very strong highlight right there? You could do that. And it's still less graying to the figure. And then the other thing you could do, you want to create a blush, is you bring a little of this crimson to your master recipe. Look at that, not that beautiful. It's just a gorgeous color. And you can easily come. And create a really healthy rosy glow. You know, even across the shoulders here, a little rosy glow. Getting that second layer of skin tones in. Again, on the browns, I generally find it's it's a bit of a longer paint for me because of the transparency of the paint unless I'm doing the acrylic color ground. But at the beginning level, you're just trying to paint along and maybe customize some of these tutorials to, you know, reflect your world a little more and your sense of beauty. Plan is big. You know, plan is big. There we are. Just making sure this arm is come back into my shadow. It's fun. I can get into this and be at this forever. It's like um even though these are simple, every layer adds something to what I'm doing. And once I got over what was making my paintings not work for me, it was really fun then 
to change these things up, you know. And hopefully this kind of illuminates some of what the artists are talking about when they're talking about master skin tone recipes, how you create different values and figures. And it's really not just about taking the same skin tone recipe and lightening and darkening it, but it's thinking about all those little variables within all of us and trying to represent that in the paint. I hope this has opened your mind. I hope this has made this just a little bit easier in your art journey. I hope you enjoyed your quick quest and I'm gonna see you at the easel really soon. Okay, bye-bye.